Severine is a farmer, activist, and organizer based in Down East Maine. She's a founder and board member of Agrarian Trust and a director of the Greenhorns, a 10-year-old grassroots organization that recruits, promotes, and supports the incoming generation of farmers in the United States. She is also a co-founder and board secretary of FarmHack, an online open source platform for appropriate and affordable farm tools and technologies, as well as a founder of the National Young Farmers Coalition. She serves on the board of the Schumacher Center for New Economics, Eat Local Eastport Cooperative, and on the advisory board of Savannah Institute. On top of all this, she runs Smithereen Farm, a certified organic wild blueberry seaweed and orchard operation, which hosts summer camps, camping and educational workshops. Severine attended Pomona College and the University of California at Berkeley, where she graduated with a Bachelor of Science in Conservation and Agroecology. Welcome, Severine, I give you the floor. You're on mute. <laughs> Golly Moses, sorry. Um, <laughs> thank you very much for having me. And um, it's so nice to be with you all. Uh, every day from here, I can see over into Canada. And um, I always wonder now that the border is open and when more of Canadians will um, venture across and participate with the world that we are living here in on Passamaquoddy territory in down easternmost Maine, right next to the Maritimes. Uh, now I have some slides. Yes, you can all see them. Okay. So I think that I've been brought here by the organizers and tell me if I'm wrong, but I think it my job is to kind of explain some of the social process that stands behind the work coordinating and all some viable path for young people entering agriculture and um, really committing to the, the kind of backstory of the institutional work that, um, uh, that helps us arrive at something that works. So that's how I understand my, my mandate is a little bit of um, interpreting what we have been doing with Agrarian Trust. Um, okay, next slide. Or do I push them forward? Okay, here we go. Um, so yes, as they said, uh, I've been involved as an organizer in Young Farmer World, a lot of which has just been like throwing parties for young people who are entering agriculture. And now finally after actually it's been 15 years um, of, of or of Greenhorns, we finally have uh, our own farm and um, I was able to buy an old uh, Oddfellows Hall, which is like a Grange Hall, which is like a civic institution from the um, 18, it's built in 1896, where we can house ourselves um, right here perched on the ocean. And, you know, we're at the stage of building our greenhouses and getting ourselves to become land-based so that we can hopefully persist for another 15 years. Um, and so it's from that work of participating in the stories of young people entering agriculture and a lot of them from non-farming backgrounds. Am I talking too fast for the interpreter? It's okay. Um, that the story of land access is obviously at the center of this um, often heartbreaking um, quest to, to farm and to steward. And um, and I would just say that we did so many uh, interviews um, and so many panels and so many films and so many guidebooks that were all kind of orbiting around that, you know, heartbreaking impossibility presented to us by capitalism and trying to figure out how to maneuver and how to, you know, wiggle through the concrete of what feels to be impossible. Next slide. Um, I just should say that the, the orientation of the, of the, 
of the work. Um, although I think it's easy to frame the story as a hero narrative and, you know, these young um, protagonists slaying the dragon and, you know, against all odds, starting a farm and having children. And maybe they're even like, you know, a normative white couple with cute rosy chip, rosy children, you know, serving bounteous vegetables to all who arrive. Well, that's one story we could tell, but um, I think that in this process of commenting ourselves that the story of the land itself and the, the volition, the, the desire of the land and the gravitational force of uh, evolutionary history and the hydrologic force of the water moving through the land, the water cycle, the carbon cycle, the nitrogen cycle, that the living planet of which we are a part as our orienting story, I think is a little bit, um, well, I think it's also easier than always having to be the hero. And I think that some of those habits, those hero habits are to do with our history as colonizers and as conquistadors and as you know, pioneer settlers. So I feel that part of the backstory of arriving at um, a, a more commons-based approach to um, land work is actually getting into the flow with the fish and trying to discover where they're going and where they're coming from and what they want, because it may be that they know better than we. Next step, these are, oh, so these are the alewives who run up the river here, my Penamaquan River. Penamaqua is the uh, Pen uh, Passamaquoddy word for um, the places where um, the sap is sweet. And this is about 350,000 fish who run up this river in the springtime, right um, in about April, when you really are interested to eat some smoked fish, I tell you what, in a cold climate. Next slide. Am I allowed to move the slides? Okay, here we go. So again, in this kind of um, orientation, this big story that lies behind our kind of current perplexity of how do we pass land forward between from one generation and from a place of consolidated consolidation and, and corporatization and the bigger and bigger farm size that's more and more costly um, to this young generation who can't afford it. Uh, which is a, obviously a predicament that's not only a predicament for the young farmer and for the elder, but actually for everyone who eats. And so we are shared in that, we are together in that predicament. And we are also shared not just as humans, but with all the animals who are trying to frigging survive in a time of climate change and adaptation. And so I think that that scoping out, again, out from the hero and out from the, you know, that like problem perspective um, and remembering that we are all implicated in these renegotiations um, and that, you know, in the same way that it's, it doesn't really matter to the river if there's a chain link fence during a flood. It's, um, it doesn't really matter to the, to the ocean if there's an arbitrary shoreline where the land used to be in geologic time and in an animate earth and in a, in a changing climate, the, the earth um, violates the boundaries of private property all the time. And so that chain link fence that was, you know, guarding the edge of your property, um, when the flood comes, it rips it away. And, you know, maybe that chain link fence will injure someone downstream. But um, that, that private property concept is actually a, a little bit arbitrary, a, little bit abstract and frankly it's been violent so maybe there's a larger logic of the landscape and the movement of animals and ecosystems across the landscape in reaction to this are kind of speeding up of geologic time that can help inform us and help us deconstruct what might be possible Woo! see they got me on here to make it crazy sounding at the beginning don't worry it will come together next slide Oh, you can see that these are infrastructures of um, migration. Uh, we talk a lot about infrastructure right now in the United States because we're uh, putting a lot of debt into our future 
by putting in a lot of power lines and roads. And there's lots of us trying to get organized for ecological infrastructure to accompany that um, communication and electrification infrastructure as it rolls out. So, um, so wherever we are and whatever context, um, we are most of us somehow implicated in extraction economies that have left our ecosystems more vulnerable than they were before to the impacts that we now face. We all are as part of farming and part of sustainable agriculture are in some way acknowledging that our work is to heal. And I'm just showing this slide to remind ourselves that um, you know, the sugar that was shipped on the ships that were being built from the trees here was, was being grown in places where pe other people were also cutting down trees in order to grow that sugar. And so uh, as victim, as villain, as perpetrator, as um, perpetratee, you know, we're, we are, I think most of us charged with our history as extractors. And I think that there's a part of this process towards commoning that is to do with making peace with where we've come from and thinking about, well, where do we go from here? And um, acknowledging that our impl how implicated we are and then saying, now, how do we work together and use our social structures to move forward? Next slide. And so the, um, the injury of the earth, am I allowed to move the slides? Unfortunately not. Okay. Um, the injury of the earth is obviously one that has been caused by human actions. And the question is, how do our human actions and how do our social contract crack tracts allow us um, most leverage um, over the decisions moving forward? But you have to show the next slide because it's metaphor. Please, somebody, is somebody, poke, somebody <laughs> poke somebody into, is the sun blocking my screen? The slide after this one? Keep going forward. If I could jab you in the ribs, that would be so much more discreet. I think he's talking about it. What happened? Okay, so here we are. So here we stand in this place uh, of extraction, and and what it lies ahead of us, obviously, is a big project of restoration and renewal and healing. And one would point out that that is not just a perplexity um, of one man alone or one young farmer trying to save the world, but that is in fact the work of humankind, and that it is a shared again, a shared mission, and one that we can really rally people of many talents around. Next slide. And so, oh, I had one. So, okay, this brings me to Agrarian Trust. Now, Agrarian Trust was founded by sitting in a circle with a lot of people who had some knowledge of some part of the problem who were all committed to this larger story of healing, of sustainable agriculture, of resilient and regional food systems, of you know, pastured poultry, of um, permaculture, of fresh vegetables, et cetera, and who were in some way holding some part of the knowledge and of the kind of like ecosystem of this land succession problem. And from that collective, we were able to think about, well, how would we be constructive if we could design a system the best we possibly could to set a standard and provoke a conversation and actually live out in public a model of land reform with our bodies and with our money? How would we um, go about doing that? And so what we came up with is basically an adaptation of the community land trust model that's been used for affordable housing for many, many years. And it grew out of um, principles of land reform that are quite diverse, you know, from Gandhi to uh, Leo Tolstoy to Henry George. There's been many people who have looked at the paradigms of private property and the problems it produces um, and who have philosophized 
um, and who have uh, prognosticated and who have thought about how valuable it would be if we would question the privatization of land and the commodification of land and the whole construct of private property ownership. Well, it's all very nice to say when you're backlit and nobody can talk back to you. But in the real world, it takes uh, quite a lot of lawyers and quite a lot of faith by a, a number of stakeholders who are willing to create the, the, the organism to hold that idea in reality. And so in the United States, we have our legal system. You guys have a different legal system, but essentially it's a trust structure that holds the land, the deed in trust, and then the um, community group has a 99 year lease and the farmers are able to farm with the support of their community group and have dignified, durable and um, direct stewardship of the land that they are using for the benefit of the community and for the benefit of the other creatures that they soil, that they soil, that they share the soil with. So this is our little like diagram that we made. Keep going. I think I have some more diagrams. Brenda, you've got about five minutes left. Okay, so, woo -hoo -hoo. so here we go with our goals, trying to have these agrarian commons pop up all over the United States in order to support incoming farmers with the means to access their land that they'd like to farm in with the support of their local community who make this possible by co-funding the purchase or by gifting land into the trust or by um, gifting money into the trust and gifting this land to the future, essentially. And um, you could say, instead of trying to colonize our youth with debt, that instead we're trying to liberate and emancipate them into this work of healing on which we all rely. Again, that's a different, slightly different frame. Okay, next slide. And so just to make it really didactic and obvious, the point is that these are, these are systems that are about emancipation and about empowerment so that there is more diversity, equity, infrastructure, trees, shade, butterflies, um, summer camps, picnic tables, bread ovens, more investment rebuilding what has become so stripped and denuded and compacted and depopulated about our rural world and instead drawing in um, to that farm system from a larger pool. Next slide. And of course, that means that there are those who have been excluded, who are explicitly included. Um, racial justice, interspecies justice, intergenerational justice. These are um, related, very related issues. Um, next slide. Um, I just wanted to do a tiny little uh, jump around in the end to say this approach to the commons isn't only about a legal and a social agreement in landholding in the form of agrarian trust. There can also be a social and a technological approach to the way that we share information about equipment. So that's the case of farm hack. So whether you're a horse powered tractor, a bicycle powered tractor, or an electric tractor. Um, these are all tools that farmers are working with and adapting for their own use on their mostly organic, small scale, diversified farms that they can share the information about it with one another. And that's a different way of operating in the world. Okay, that's more commons approach. Our common good is through learning and sharing, not only through competing. Next one. Um, and just in case you wanted to go and visit and benefit from or contribute to this large encyclopedia of farm equipment ideas and designs that other people have um, put forward, you can even be in a pen pal collaboration with them. And this is how it looks on the website when you go to farmhack.org. 
um, you could say that these same equipment, these same open source culture of sharing like through Wikipedia is something we can also do with um, approaches to land access. So that I hope that agrarian trust can be of benefit to you guys. Certainly agrarian trust was of benefit to the group in BC who started the food lands. Last slide. Um, and then of course, I can never end without saying that this work that we are undertaking as young people, especially making meaning of this big task that we all are facing together is to be, um, to draw together our social connections and to speak publicly about our opinions and not be sequestered in a world of vicious memes. And so for that reason, I say to you, please, will you consider writing for the almanac which we put out every other year, which is all written by farmers for farmers, and where we have a chance to trot out our jolly concepts and gain confidence in our voices together. I think there might be one more slide. Oh yes, the border is open. So uh, just to say, we're we're only 20 miles from Canada here at um, a re reversing hall where we have 8,000 books on agriculture, and we've just bulldozed the front so we can put in a handicap ramp, and um, we're ready to roll up. If you're young, old, or in between, everyone is welcome, and we have summer camps all summer long. And pick your own strawberries. And I better shut up. Thank you for involving this commons framework in your conference. I super appreciate being included. Thanks so much, Severin. I know uh, the chat has been blowing up with uh, people that are excited uh, about what they heard. And uh, from somebody who, uh, my most favorite thing about um, the National Farmers Union is uh, the young farmers. I do believe a young farmer is a hero and we thank you uh, for your address.